So the final video that we're going to use to go through protein synthesis is how on earth do we turn this language of mRNA into the language of a protein, which is amino acids? So this is the final stage of protein synthesis, and that's called translation. So when we look at our little diagram here, you can see we've already done transcription up the top here. We've done RNA processing, which happens about here. That RNA has now left the nucleus uh, and it's come up to a ribosome. And this is probably the most important part in some respects. And this is where we're going to start translating the code of DNA into the code of proteins. So transcription was just copying the information into the DNA onto mRNA. Translation is where we're actually using that information in the nucleic acid and turning it into a protein. So like before, this is stage three, but now we're in the cytosol. It has four main points that we need to remember when we're writing down about this stage. So let's just have a look. The very first one is that the ribosome comes along and binds itself to the mRNA. So a ribosome is kind of like a little hamburger structure and the mRNA is here in the middle and it kind of clamps itself on and like this. Yeah. So that's what's happening first is that ribosome is binding itself to the mRNA. After that, there's also another molecule called tRNA, and I'm just going to pretend this is my ribosome. Now, the tRNA molecule, which we can go back to your nucleic acids notes to have a look at, it looks like that trident or that clover leaf shape. It comes along and binds to the ribosome like this, okay? And then in there, on the other end of the tRNA, are three bases, and that's called an anticodon. And they actually match up with another three bases on the mRNA. Now, when I say match up, there's a word that we talked about with nucleic acids, and it's forming complementary base pairs. So it doesn't mean that they are the same base pairs. It means that they are actually the opposite and complementary. So, for example, if the mRNA code reads AT, uh, AUU, then the tRNA anticodon is going to be UAA. Yes, so it's the opposite and complementary sequence on that tRNA. And what happens is every single combination of three bases codes for a specific amino acid. And you can see these words that are in red. Um, so we've got the red in threes, that's called a codon. So this here, this UAC, that is a codon. This GUC in the diagram, that's another codon. Yeah. And then on this tRNA, that's what we call an anticodon. So that's the anticodon, that's the codon. So it's being read in threes by those tRNA molecules. And what happens is the tRNA molecules come in and they bring with, sorry, they come in from this direction and they bring with them an amino acid on the back. So you can see that there are different amino acids. We've got MET, serine, so MET stands for methionine, serine, alanine, tyrosine, valine, and another serine. Yeah, and we're going to go through this genetic code in a different video, but essentially the tRNA, the, the ribosomes moving along your mRNA, the tRNA is bringing in an amino acid. It drops off the amino acid like it's dropping off this and then it goes away and then it moves down a little bit more and it comes along and it brings another amino acid and then they start to form a chain. Yeah, And you start to get this chain forming of amino acids behind that initial one. Um, and eventually you get what we call a polypeptide. Now a polypeptide is this bit here. It's this chain of amino acids. So a polypeptide is a chain of amino acids. All right. Now, what I want you to do in a second is I'm going to get you to switch to page eight and nine in your notes. And there's another old VCAR exam question. So with that, find the question, have a read, and I want you to press pause. So here's the question that we're looking for. It's the same stem as the previous question, but now we're going to answer part B of, the same, of that question. Um, and so I want you to pause and give it a go first and then restart the video when you're ready. So hopefully you've had a go at that question. And now let's have a look at it. So it says, describe the events occurring in stage two 
including the roles of each of the structures S, F, E, and G. And we're worth four marks here. So when we're worth four marks, definitely means that we need at least four points. Best thing about biology, we can use those dot points. So let's highlight those letters that we need to be talking about. So we're talking about stage two. This is events outside the nucleus. Uh, we need S, we need F, we need E, and we need G. Yeah. And I'm just going to go through and label them before I even start my answer. So I make sure that I include them correctly when I'm writing my answer. So we know that this is the only stage that occurs outside the nucleus, and that's called translation. Now, there's nothing in the stem that talks about translation. Uh, S here is showing me a ribosome. F is a polypeptide chain. And this is what I like to do. Yeah, I like to annotate the, draw the drawings and the diagrams before I even attempt the question. It just makes it a bit easier. So G is actually pointing to what we call it. That's the anticodon. And E is the tRNA molecule. So let's just have a look and see what are some of the dot points that we could put down here. So the first one we would say is we're going to talk about this translation process and I'm going to add the letters in as we go. So the ribosome is going to bind to the mRNA. So the ribosome is structure S yeah, and it's going to bind to the mRNA which doesn't have a letter there. Um, then the tRNA E brings the amino acid to the ribosome S. Yeah, mRNA is going to be read in threes coding for specific amino acids. Um, you could say something here about each tRNA molecule. So G is the anticodon in there also. And then finally, a polypeptide chain is formed and that's F. So you can see there that I've not only used the information that we understand about translation and when we write down those dot points, but I've linked it to the question by making sure that I'm putting in the correct letters to correspond with the diagram. And that's the way that you can kind of really fully pull out those four marks within that question.